Hello, everyone. Hey, thanks for joining. I want to take some time. I'm here with Stefan Church, and we're going to talk about a gift that Stefan and Melissa have provided to our community. And it really, the Lord put this on their hearts to be a blessing to us, to speak to us in a powerful way during this time of consecration. And so when you're in Bethel City and then you're in our sanctuary, you're going to see this and you're going to have an opportunity to respond to it. And it's, we just, uh, I'm just grateful for that act of service. And Stefan has prepared some content here for us to walk through. And he's going to lead us through that and explain what this is all about and how we can benefit from the understanding. So Stefan, I want to turn it over to you. Feel free to walk us through um, this insp inspired gift that okay. you all have presented on behalf of the Lord and in service of the Lord. Well, thank you, Pastor. Um, yes, so um, just to kind of go back to like, so why? What, what, what's, what's the purpose of this or why as well? Um, I would say shortly after I had watched the um, James Kowalia video, um, I remember um, just hearing about covenant prayer, covenant prayer. And um, God was like, really like showing me like the importance of covenant, uh, which is something I never like put focus into. So I did, I was doing the study in covenant. And uh, one of the things I was like, coming to realize um, is that there is these, um, acts of remembrance that are typically tied to a uh, covenant that help wow. keep his people um, to remember the acts that God has done in the ways that God has done he, in the way he's in. So, um, and I was looking at that and I, I was seeing areas that like God has shown me in the past to like do this thing. Um, I, I know particularly with, with my wife, um, he was said, give her, make these gifts for her. And so I did. And what, you know, at first I thought, you know, it'd just be a nice gift for her and it was a way to treat her hard and it was, but going into our marriage, it, these have actually been reminders of vows that I've made to her and have actually kept me to stay true to those vows. And so like I would walk in the area of fear and then see this gift that says that I would oh, fear only God. And then I'm like, no, I fear only God. That is a vow I made. And so um, going into this, this area of consecration is like, this is a big deal. Like consecration is no joke. Like to walk out as holy as God is holy is not something that is, I think it should be taken lightly. And that's why some guys been speaking to my heart in this consecration uh, fast. Um, and so he put me, put this on my heart is like, you did this for your wife. Now I want you to do this for me. I want this to be something for Bethel city mm. to do for me. Um, and so that, that's kind of the idea and purpose behind it. And I just kind of want to go over some real quick scriptures just, just to back up like what I'm talking about and just some other, some context before we go into like what it is and like some of the meaning behind it and how you can actually get involved. Um, so yeah. let's see. Oh, here we go. So uh, first I want to just go into like some symbols of covenant. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, these are uh, uh, symbols that God has given to us. So like the first one I point out is the rainbow covenant, which is probably one of the earliest um, symbols that we have that God's given to us, which is the rainbow. Um, and it showed that he would never flood the world again, that like that. And so um, like he has that symbol that represents this, this powerful thing, that promise that God has made to his people. Um, and in the same way, if you learn the New Testament, you have um, the Last Supper and you have uh, the bo his body and his blood, which take in the form of the bread and the wine. And so it's like, these things are meant to remind us what God, God has done in his acts towards us. Um, other acts of remembrance. Now, this is more things that God's called us to do. Uh, first, I want to pull up Joshua 22, 26. This is not necessarily between um, us and God, but this was between the Israelites. Um, so the context here is that the uh, house of Reuben, Gad, and uh, the half tribe of Manasseh had built this altar, and um, the rest of the Israelites were going to come in and uh, war with them because they thought that they were turning away from God. But they said that this is not a sacrifice that we're going to do burnt offerings on, but it was simply as a remembrance to 
the fact that we are all part of um that we are all we're all god's children we're all like we're all israelites and so it says um they wanted to know that they had a portion in the lord and so yeah. coming from that is um the rest of the house is like they uh, uh they saw that and were pleased they're like okay this is a good thing you've done and so they they created this altar to remember to remind themselves and remember yes. remind their brothers who they were in their relationship um we also have uh the uh the unleavened bread and the fact that it says um you should not eat it uh throughout the seven days nothing leaven shall be seen among you nor shall any leaven be seen among you in all your borders right and then you can say that it's like you shall tell your sons on that day saying it is because of what the lord did for me when i came out of egypt so this act that the Lord is like Moses commanded the uh, Israelites from God to do was to remind themselves of what God did for them in um, as they came out of Egypt. And so it says, it shall serve as a sign to you on your hand and as a reminder on your forehead that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. Um, for with a powerful hand, the Lord brought you out of Egypt. And so, and if we go into the Mosaic law, I'm not going to go into all this. <laughs> that would take forever. But if we look into like the temples, the priest garbs, which um, I, I believe are really highly symbolic. And a lot of it points directly to Christ, Christ coming, um, tabernacle. Um, these are all, these, these are all laced, and laced with symbols that represent like things that God has done, who he is, his holiness and his sacredness. And so like, it's the ideas of, having ways to remember what God has done and who he is, 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 is like a very biblical and important aspect in my opinion. Or, yeah. So, I, like, I like what you said, Steph, and you said, you know, when I see this thing I made for my wife and I'm in a place of fear, that symbol speaks back to me, mm -hmm. you know, from, from the original purpose that it was created about, you know, how fear no one but God. And so I, this is a, it's a, it's beautiful. Yeah, please continue. Thank you. Um, and so uh, one thing I, I do wanted to point out is that I think when it comes to symbols, it's easy to get into the idea of um, idol worship or getting distracted. And so like, for instance, Deuteronomy 419, it says, and beware lest you raise your eyes to heaven um, and uh, you see and when you see the sun and the moon and stars and all the hosts of heaven, be drawn out and bow down to them and serve them things that the Lord your God has allotted to all the people under the whole heaven. Um, so it's like that says like you're not supposed to be bowing to the things that God's created. If we go to Isaiah 66, uh, 1 through 24, um, which I, I can't pull up right now, um, just to kind of like summarize, it's like saying that Lord wants us to come with a contrite spirit. He wants a humble and contrite spirit to come towards him and that without that when we like sacrifice the ox it is like killing a man and so like and he goes through all the list of like all the sacrifices you can do um and they're considered an abomination of war because you're not coming with a, a humble and contrite spirit and so I, I do want to point out is like we're not trying to create a work to get a uh, for consecration this is a reminder of an a commitment that we've made to god in promises that he's made to but promises we made to him in uh pro in vows and covenants that he's made with us to remind us of that um so uh going from that um we i just want to go over some of the symbolism of what the gift is um and how it's supposed to go back into this theme of consecration um so yes. the goal being is like when you see it to remind yourself of the consecration of uh, vows or agreements you've made with the Lord so that you can remember and stay faithful in those, uh, those vows. Yep. Uh, so first and foremost, um, so this kind of like ties into a double meaning. Um, first is the, what Christ has done for us. And then there is a call to action. So, when we first look at it, um, you have the bread and the grapes, which represents um, Christ as the center of our life. As the as the bread and the grapes are in the center, um, 
our gift and salvation and grace comes from him along with our inheritance. So everything is centered on Christ. We're supposed to remain centered on him. Um, the, uh, bread and the grapes obviously represents the Last Supper, his um, his body and his blood, uh, where the lilies over the red cloth represent um, his blood and how it brings us to purity. How lilies represent typically represent um, uh, purity. In this case, it's how, hmm, excuse me, his blood makes us white as snow. Uh, the light represents our inheritance in Christ and uh, the Holy Spirit in us. Um, it, it, it also represents how we're called into walk in holiness and authority through Christ as lights in the world. And so yes. from Christ and in Christ, we have um, spiritual blessings from heavenly places, uh, every spiritual blessing from heavenly places. And so, again, it's Christ is a center. But from it, we we get our inheritance. We have the Holy Spirit. We have all the fullness of Christ. Um, and then I'm going to skip the jar real quick, and I'm just going to want to go to the tray. The tray represents authentic uh, service. So when Christ came down, he, he gave his life to us. Like he, he lived a life of sacrifice, and he died for our sins. Um, and so this kind of going back into the double meaning of this is how this is supposed to point us back to christ and what he's done for us how he gave himself up for us he died so that we can be redeemed and that we can walk in the fullness of christ there is an invitation to um as well to give our lives <clears throat> excuse me yes. so in the same way that he gave his life, we're called to live as living sacrifices. <laughs> um, keeping Christ-centered and remind that because of his blood, we are made white as snow and we are able to walk in the fullness of Christ. Yeah, so, you're just walking us through this stuff. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, it's, just, it's just so poetic how this is assembled. And um, I'm really inspired about how the Lord spoke to you to create this. Um, and there, there's so much meaning in it. Uh, the tray just, just whoa, that, that really hit me. So just thanks for, um, thanks for drawing that out. Well, I kind of going into what you said, Pastor. Um, the the funny thing is, like when we first were like, we this needs to be assembled. Like, Lord was telling us like this is the direction we need to go. Um, because like I remember originally talking to you, it's like I don't know if this is a thing that would work, or you know, because you remember that original call. Um, we really didn't have a vision of how exactly it look, just as much of like this is going to be a thing about this is about consecration. This is about uh, what does that mean. And so um, while we were walking in and kind of arranging it, that's that's when the Lord would speak. And that's when he was like directing us. Um, so it's it's a really amazing, like, because like I had no vision of how this would all come together. Um, so a lot of it was like the Lord just directing us like, yeah, this is this is what I want you to do. Um, so uh, it, like I'm, I'm as amazed as you how it turned out. Um, not because I'm like, oh, I'm a great craftsman or anything, but like just how the Lord directed me to to yeah. construct this um excuse me um but yeah just so just to like wrap this up though the um the final piece is the jar and again because of what christ has done for us we can walk in and um our our prayers are like a sweet essence incense to the lord and so being able to like walk in that is is really powerful and to know that our prayers are powerful and effective and that's because of christ um uh, and so that goes into the invitation so as you can see right now it's empty um we would love if for um anyone to um come in I don't know how how um how you want to actually set this up, Pastor, but um, 
I, I, we'll, we'll have the table we'll have the table out available for people to access it inside of our sanctuary with the um some small pieces of paper um and some pens for folks to to respond um i'm only concerned that it'll get overly full oh <laughs> yeah i guess we might have to look for a, a bigger ball in that case um keep going though. no let's go ahead yeah so we'll make it we'll put it in a prominent place um it's right that people will have a hard time finding it in any of our meetings um, inside the sanctuary. So we will, yeah. Well, I want to say, so uh, we cut up a bunch of um, like sheets. I want to say like, mm -hmm. if anyone's ever gotten a, 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 a verse from Francois, they know exactly like the kind of size that, that we're talking about. So it's kind of like that. Um, we're yes. really inviting all everyone to uh, write a scripture verse, a word of thanksgiving, a prayer dedication, and place in the jar. Um, the The main caveat with here is we're really focusing on the theme of consecration and walking in a consecrated lifestyle. So, um, as much as we really appreciate and love, um, you know, prayers for loved ones, um, you know, personal prayers, um, requests, uh, petitions. This isn't really necessarily the the place for that. Um, this is more focused on like thanking the Lord, uh, worshiping Him, praising Him on high, put, putting our dedication to Him, and walking into that area of consecration, um, coming into that agreement with the Lord. Is like I'm going to live uh, live a holy life because You are holy. You've called me to be holy. Um, so. We, we really want people to invite to just come in and take part in that um, because I, I think the desire is that as we have this um, tray in uh, service or wherever it ends up going, that when you're able to look at it, you can rem remind yourself of those agreements you made with the Lord. And if you are stumbling or you're struggling, that reminder will strengthen your spirit or act as like and so just it's just another tool kind of like um if you have your mind renewal book or you know any other like <laughs> uh study book or anything it's just another tool to help us to stay focused on christ stay focused on our relationship with him and um main you know just have that relate just have that really strong relationship with him yeah i want to just uh echo what you said about what type of way to respond to this with those strips of paper that you provided. And I think it's really important for us to, so, so often we can get caught up on what the benefits of, of walking mm -hmm. with God and what he provides. And that's part of why he's a good God, right? Um, we're not taking anything away from it, but it, I think the, um, the sacrifice of praise, the, the 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 gratitude, you know, for the mercy of Christ, um, His kindness, and, or just a prayer of dedication that Lord, this is this is what I want my life to be. This is I want to live for you. You died for me so that I could live, and I want to live for you. That that is very appropriate. We're in a time of consecration. This is a lifestyle. Obviously, it's a lifestyle where. We do have a rigorous schedule of prayer and we're called into that by the Lord. And I love how the Lord confirmed that even amongst the leadership team, there were some folks the Lord had already prepared the way when I went to talk to them about what the Lord was telling us. And and even some of my pastor friends that I pray with were prophesying some of the mm -hmm. things that uh, God was showing me. And I said, okay, Lord, we're clearly going down this path. And it's, 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 it's difficult, right? It's difficult to, to shut down all the things in life that we 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 kind of um, enjoy, um, and in the right place, many of those things are good. Um, but it, to be really intentional about just drawing close to the Lord, and so I, I love this symbol and being able to respond in this way, and that the the, uh, the the candles with the representation of the Holy Spirit, the the bread and the, and the, the grapes just and the the red cloth symbolizing the blood of Jesus and the lily sim symbolizing the purity and that basket symbolizing you know service and 
um, the life that we're called to, to just lay down our lives in response to him laying down his life. It just really is, is a blessing. And I just want to invite everyone who sees this um, to think through what you're going to write down before you do, even you could even draft it out or, you know, you might um, take, take a day or two or even several days and just think through it um, and, and place it in the jar, a prayer, a prayer of dedication or something you want to thank the Lord for. And it's really just um, meaningful and that you want to remember any time that you see this image um, or a verse that you've come into agreement with. Our memory verse this month is be holy as I'm holy. And uh, that's really important to Jesus. He really wants you to walk close to him and holiness is a big part of that. So Stefan, I'll, I'll give you the last word, but thank you so much for just your active obedience. Um, I'm grateful that, that God spoke to you in this way and that you all invested in this to, to be a blessing to us as a body. That means a lot to me, Pastor. Um, and um, I, I really don't know what else to say um, other than I think, um, it, you know, we, we were talking about before the call a bit about um, several different things and, um, you know, this, it's been, it's been really hard, uh, a lot of the walk that we've been through, but um, I, it's, it's been amazing seeing the power that um, just like the, the life, the, the life that got crisis brought into um I know my personal life, um, I know you can attest in your life, um, I see it in the church. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see where the church is going. Um, I think it's, I think it's awesome to just hear people's testimonies about like what they've been doing through the consecration and how they have, they are picking up their cross and following them. And so it's like, I'm, I'm really honored to be part of a body that takes Christ seriously, that sees him not as just a best friend, but as a holy God um, that deserves reverence and, um, mm. I think that uh, I'm just really excited to see like what God has in store because, you know, he, he has, he tells amazing stories. So I'm excited to hear uh, how, how this story continues. Amen. Amen.